everybody. This is Rob Swatsky of the York campus of Harrisburg Area Community College. And this podcast is the first of several on the axial skeleton. And I'll be focusing on several of the cranial bones and their bony landmarks, including the frontal bone, parietal bones, and temporal bones. The skull consists of 22 bones total. There are eight cranial bones, which surround and protect the brain. These bones include the single frontal bone, the two parietal bones, the two temporal bones, one occipital bone, one sphenoid bone, and one ethmoid bone. There are 14 facial bones that form the structure of the face, including two nasal bones, two maxillae, two zygomatic bones, one mandible, two lacrimal bones, two palatine bones, two inferior nasal conchi, and one vomer. Let's explore several of the cranial bones, beginning with the frontal bone. The frontal bone forms the forehead, the roofs of the orbits, which are the eye sockets, and the anterior part of the cranial floor. The bony landmarks associated with the frontal bone include the coronal suture, which is located along the crown at the top of the skull, which joins the frontal bone to the two parietal bones. The supraorbital margin is the thickening of the frontal bone above both of the orbits. And located within the supraorbital margin is a hole called the supraorbital foramen. This allows passage of the supraorbital nerve and artery. The two parietal bones form most of the sides and roof of the cranial cavity. Now let's examine the temporal bones, which form the inferior lateral portion of the cranium, as well as part of the cranial floor. The temporal squama is a thin, flat part of the temporal bone located at the temple, which is the cranial region around the ear. Extending out from the inferior region of the temporal squama is the zygomatic process, which articulates with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone, which is the cheekbone, and together both of these processes form the zygomatic arch. The mandibular fossa is a groove-like socket on the inferior surface of the zygomatic process, and just anterior to the mandibular fossa is a rounded bump called the articular tubercle. Both the mandibular fossa and articular tubercle articulate with the mandible to form the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ. The external auditory meatus is the ear canal, meatus meaning passageway, and this canal carries sound waves into the ear. The mastoid portion is the area just posterior to the external auditory meatus. The mastoid process is the rounded outgrowth that projects out of the mastoid portion. This strong round projection serves as an attachment point for several of the neck muscles. The styloid process is another projection that extends inferiorly from the inferior surface of the temporal bone. Styloid means stake or spike. This small, slender process is an attachment point for muscles of the tongue and neck. If we look at the floor of the cranial cavity, we can find another opening called the internal auditory meatus. This opening allows the passage of the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, and the vestibulocochlear nerve, cranial nerve 8. The petrous portion is the strong, triangular, rocky ridge located at the floor of the cranial cavity between the sphenoid and occipital bones. This is the area of the temporal bone that contains both the internal and middle ear. Also within the petrous portion is the carotid foramen, which allows passage of the carotid artery. And located just posterior to the carotid foramen and anterior to the occipital bone is the jugular foramen, which allows passage of the jugular vein. Okay, that's all for now. Stay tuned for more podcasts featuring the bones and bony landmarks of the axial skeleton. 
Thanks for watching.